So I have created these variations, and I want one of them as my black shape logo. This one isn't a black shape logo yet. It has white on top of black. So I could do the, the tricky job of like filling this in with a black circle, merging that together, and then punching the white out of that. Or I could just use it as this black shape here, but it doesn't really have a clear identity then. And what is the logo supposed to do? It's supposed to be clear, engaging, and versatile. So just ask yourself, when is your black logo as clear, engaging, as versatile as, as you're willing to make it, you know, within this deadline? And then I'm going to keep all of these files here, but I'm going to turn the ones off and lock them that I'm not using. And I'm going to choose the one I like most, which is going to be this one. And so I'm going to unlock it, select it with the large selection tool. I'm going to move it onto the artboard. And I'm going to hold down shift, just like I did at the beginning, and shrink it. doesn't need to be centered, but it does need to fit on the artboard, whatever your artboard is. That's just for the, the standard scalable vector format, the SVG. You need to have it on the artboard. So now, if this is the one I want, I can just go ahead and update my AI file. It will have all of these other resources in it, but it will only show this one. And then I'm also going to say file save as to my computer an EPS. And I'm going to this is my second version, right? So I'm going to call this medallion. Generally, when you do a logo within a circle, it's kind of a medallion template. And it's interesting to do a dynamic shape within a circle because it's kind of doing both central symmetrical and dynamic at the same time. Okay, now you can see that. I've got two EPSs. <laughs> and the one I'm going to use is the medallion one. How do I put it up to Canvas, and how do I get it ready to print? Because all of you are required to print a logo, and it can be either your black shape one or your color version of your black shape one. So if I go to Canvas and I go to the assignment, the first thing you need to submit is your refined sketch into assignment four. I've done that. The next thing you need to put in is your black logo. So your black shape logo. And you're going to save it actually out of Photoshop because Photoshop is a raster program and to make an, a file that can be seen online, it has to be pixel based. So to do that, what do I do? I open up Photoshop. I don't open the file with Photoshop. Instead, I open up Photoshop on its own. And I can do this with Photo P as well. And once Photoshop is open, I'm going to set it to be the, the resolution I want. So I'm going to say new file or file new, and I'm going to set it just like we did for all of our projects to be a minimum of 10 inches by, or actually a width of 8 inches by 10 inches tall. Notice it's in inches by 350. That's my standard lab resolution, pixels per inch. It's going to be a white background. It's RGB color mode, right? And for whatever reason, that did pixels rather than inches. So I'm going to change it again here in image size. 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get rid of my timeline. I'm not making the animation anymore. So now I just have an 8 by 10 inch, at least 300 pixel per inch, you know, white background. Then I'm going to drag and drop my EPS file onto it. It will fill the space. It is just a preview right now. So it's going to look like it's pixelated, but it is not. It is a vector. It is just like if we used a vector shape. And I'm going to hold down Option to scale it. I don't need to hold down Shift because this is Photoshop. It will already lock its proportion, but Option will scale it towards the center. So that's perfectly centered. And now this is the way I want you to think about it. The black space around the right rectangle is your map. 
So you're just deciding how much white space do you want around your logo when you print it. Okay. Then you hit return. And now this is a vector. You can see the little vector shape there. It's a smart object linked to a vector but it's going to rasterize itself to whatever the native resolution is. So if I change this to be 16 by 20 inches, my vector logo will be just, will, will match that resolution, will be perfectly clean at any resolution. So this is how we work between uh, raster and vector files. We turn the vector into a smart object, and then it will always be as sharp as possible within the pixel space we create. And because this is print resolution, that will look really good. Now, how do I save it to put to canvas? I turn off the background because I don't want that white space in the image. And I save it as an online format. So I'm going to first save it as my assignment. Assignment for... This is the black shape logo part. We'll also do a color one. And as a PSD, as a Photoshop document, save it to the desktop, that's going to have the smart object in it, which is a vector. I turn off the background, and now I save it as a copy as a PNG format. PNG format preserves the transparency, keep the defaults, and now if I open that up in preview, you know, it will be on a gray background. That's what I put up to canvas. So what is my refined or my, my finished black logo? It is actually a PNG. But that PNG is rendered from a smart object EPS vector. <laughs> it's a little complicated, but we'll get used to it. Right? Now this shows... It's related to my refined sketch, but I went some different directions with it, and that's fine. Now, the last requirement, and this isn't due till next class after spring break, and you can play with it as much as you like over spring break, but the last requirement is to add color. How did I get into this? Ah, don't want to edit that. Come back. The last requirement, ah, yeah. <laughs> is to add color. So let me, I hit post in the wrong place. So black shape logo as PNG with no background out of Photoshop. Now you need to be careful because EPS files are picky. And if you try to open your EPS file in Photoshop, it will force you to rasterize it, which defeats the whole purpose of it being a vector. So make sure you open Photoshop first and then you drag and drop it in so it stays a smart object. And then you protect it as a smart object. I'll mark it as green so I know this is protected. Now to add color, what do I do? I can turn on the background again, and I duplicate it, Command-J, keep it as a smart object, and then double-click on it to open layer styles, and then you can add things like gradients. Things like drop shadows. Because these layer styles work beautifully with vectors because they're perfectly clean to match whatever resolution you put them in. We can even play with texture and contouring. So the texture I like when I do this for logos is actually under the water presets. It's the most kind of empty water. It's looking like a Jurassic Park logo. But then you can play with the size of it and you can make it really small so it just looks like kind of handmade paper. 
and you can play with the depth to make it more subtle. And then of course with colors, you can use color overlay. You can use blending modes. And you can play with your gradations and your opacities. And you can play with your angles. There's just so much you can do. Let's just do basics. Let's do blues. Because it's a campus logo or campus mascot, it makes sense to use some campus colors, right? So then that begs the question, well, what if I want the inside of my color version? I know I, my black shape logo had to be like all cut out of black shapes. What if I want my color version to have things filled in? Well, that's so simple because all you do is create a layer behind it and you can use vector shapes if you want or you can just use your lasso. And I can just say fill with a color. Let's say gray. Right now I have that it's kind of like a piece of colored stained glass and then I can just use layer styles on that right so if I use our campus colors which are pretty tough to make use of the fluorescent green I think they call it spring green and the deep blue like this is where you can start playing with variations. That make a little bit more sense. For your client, right? And then what if you want to color within the shapes of your logos? Like if I wanted the eyes to be a different color. Well, what you do is you keep your smart object, but then you select the parts from your smart object you want to color differently and you duplicate them and then you change their effects. So even though they are rasterized, they're outputted from your smart object. So as long as you stay in the same resolution, they're all going to look good. So if I want that eye to be a little bit lighter, for instance, or to turn that drop shadow off, I can do that. What if I wanted to have a stroke? This is actually really fun with vectors, right? Because unlike the stroke in Illustrator, I can set the stroke to be on the outside or on the inside, not just centered. So if I try it on the outside, that's pretty nice. But maybe I want it only on the, the outside of the inside, if that makes sense. So what I do is I select it all here just duplicate those and then turn on the layer styles only where I need them. And then erase the rest because now this is rasterized. So what do I want to do? I want to do anyway, lots of versions that you can play with It's because I don't have contiguous checked. So if I only want these shapes to have the stroke. I just duplicate that only. So that's how we're going to add color as layer styles. And it really lets you kind of explore the full range of them. And all the options you have, right? And there's texture in there. There's just all kinds of stuff going on. You, you make it as subtle or as professional as you want. Now, remember, a logo at the end of the day is supposed to be clean and simple. <laughs> so overdoing it is not always the best, best way to go. And you want it to be easy to read from a distance. So versatile.